You know, we're spending all this money on probiotics thinking that they're just the most wonderful thing and they die in the stomach. Hey everyone, welcome back. We have got some daylight. If you saw our last video, we were running out of daylight, so we had to make this a part two to our other video, which was do antibiotics kill viruses? And if you watch that, you learn that they do not. So make sure you go watch it if you missed it. And in this video, we are gonna talk about how to rebuild your gut health after you've been on antibiotics, right? And not just that, but we're just talking gut health in general. Yes. So, you know, you don't have to only, this video isn't for you if you've only taken antibiotics. If you're having stomach issues, IBS, stuff like that, this video is gonna apply to you as well, it's so. It's gonna give you some answers. Yep. So first we're gonna talk about those trendy gut health things out there that you should avoid at all costs. First one being, fish oil. So fish oil, that's a popular one out there. We want to avoid that because it contains mercury and mercury is something that we actually want to eliminate from our body and not put in there. Other one would be uh, collagen. Collagen is super popular right now and that's something that should not be taken because it actually fuels viruses. Yeah, and then uh, fermented foods that's a huge one. I know everybody thinks fermented foods actually do your body good, but the microorganisms in fermented food thrive off of the decaying process, not the life-giving process. Yes, and we want to focus on living organisms into our body that are going to help our gut, yep. not putting dead microorganisms in there. Yeah, and then the last one is a massive popular one right now, and that is probiotics. Everybody thinks that probiotics are the best thing for your gut. And most all factory produced probiotics end up dying in the stomach before it actually makes it to the ileum and the ileum is right before your small intestines and that's where you want those probiotics to get to or those uh, life-giving microorganisms yeah. that we were just talking about. That was a big one for us. We used to take those thinking that it was helping our gut yeah. but actually it wasn't um, so that was a big shocker to us as well. And they're expensive. Yeah. <laughs> they were super expensive and yeah. we thought they were the best thing out there yeah. and that includes uh, yogurt because yogurt advertises all the time that it contains probiotics and you're even seeing other products do that now but yogurt contains dairy and dairy feeds viruses yeah so, so. that one gotta nix that yeah <laughs> <laughs> So if we can't eat any of those items for probiotics, then how do we get them? So there is a film that covers the skin and the leaves of fruits and veggies that has a natural probiotic, and those are called elevated biotics. Yeah, and these elevated biotics, they don't die in the stomach. You know, we're spending all this money on probiotics thinking that they're just the most wonderful thing and they die in the stomach. So you need the elevated biotics because they'll make it to the ileum and when the microorganisms, the life-giving microorganisms make it to the ileum, it helps your body produce B12. And without B12, we die. So it's super important. Imagine your body having a dam inside of it, and that dam is the B12. And we don't want to break the dam, because if we break the dam, then our body gets flooded. And what it gets flooded with is the unforgiving four. And the unforgiving four are viruses, DDT, radiation, and heavy metals. If you don't know about the Unforgiving Four, be sure to get Anthony Williams' book, The Medical Medium, or even any of his other books, and he goes into much detail about those 
and how to get them out of your system. So in my situation, we were talking about antibiotics. If you haven't heard the story, go back, watch her other video, and I explain how I took antibiotics two, three times, and they broke my dam. My dam got broke. He was flooded <laughs> and had terrible symptoms. <laughs> yeah, so it's very important that if you do take antibiotics and they end up breaking your dam, that you know how to heal and you know how to repair the dam and fix it up again so then it doesn't get broke. Okay, so let's say your dam is broken like Ben's was. He was in pretty bad shape and we needed to repair his gut health. The first thing we did was celery juice. This is the most powerful thing you could do. So if you're only going to choose one thing, you have to do celery juice. What celery juice is going to do is it is going to rebuild your hydrochloric acid, which is going to rebuild your gut health. Yeah, and then we had to, we later found out about these heavy metals and how the heavy metals play a role in your gut health. And we said, okay, well, let's get these out of our body, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we started with the heavy metal detox smoothie. And that was in the medical medium book, his first book. Talked all about it, laid out the ingredients. We'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out. But then we later found out about all of these other foods that we could be incorporating that also remove metals from the body. Foods like parsley, cilantro, garlic, sage, uh, red clover blossom, which has become a little hard to find, you know, you <laughs> kind of have to grow your own just to get the blossoms. And then seaweed became a big thing because seaweed helps remove metals from the body yep and one big one is spirulina and that's in the heavy metal detox smoothie so you got to check the link below click that link check out the the detox smoothie and start doing it yeah there's also some a few supplements that you could take too um, there's zeolite, which is something that we also take, and then there's L-glutamine, which is also helpful with removing metals. So we also needed to get in a lot of elevated biotics. So what that meant was a lot of big salads for lunch, dinner, whenever we could get that in. Mm -hmm. So the items that contain the most elevated biotics are microgreens, lettuces, spinach, uh, Swiss chard, watercress, did I say mache, arugula. Yeah, collard greens, uh, mustard greens, kale, dandelion greens. We talked about those heavy metal herbs, but they also contain elevated biotics like cilantro and parsley. Yep. And then you can even get them from like radish greens. Yep, you can throw those in a salad. You can even throw it in a smoothie. Uh, the fruits that are going to contain it the most would be like berries, definitely have a yeah. ton of it, and apples, um, and apples that don't contain the waxy coat that stores yeah. put on there. <laughs> Fresh picked apples. Yep. And fruit, fruit is also something that feeds the good guys, right? There's yep. bad guys and good guys, and I'm talking about bacteria. Mm. So. The good bacteria, it feeds, and it feeds off of the good stuff you put in your body, such as antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So the more antioxidants you get in your body, the more good bacteria, good life-giving microorganisms you're going to have in your gut. Yes, it's going to make them stronger, and also it's good to build that up in your system for any time adrenaline-based stress strikes when that strikes your body is going to go you know under a bit of a panic and when you have a reserve of these good strong bacteria they're going to help support you during those times yeah and it also will take down your uh, adrenal glands so yeah. fruit is another way to help build up those adrenal glands so if you don't want to wear them out yeah now the most crucial thing you guys could do for your health is to eliminate the troublemaker foods. Now I know you guys don't want to hear this. It's a long list, but trust me, it will make such a huge difference with your healing. 
grab a pen, make sure you write these down. If not, we will list them below. Yeah, and if you don't catch them, you can also just go out and get a Anthony's books. He's got a bunch of books out there and he goes into detail on every single one of these we're going to list off. Yep. So we're talking about foods such as eggs, dairy, seafood, pork, uh, canola oil, processed beet sugar, lamb, uh, natural flavors, citric acid, um, did you say soy and corn, GMO foods, carbonated drinks, gluten, gluten, that's a big one, yeah. <laughs> uh, caffeine, unfortunately, can feed as well, vinegar, which we just spoke about yeah. in this video, <laughs> and fermented foods, we talked about that, that's another thing you want to avoid, yeah, so these are the, really the main culprits and these are the things that you want to take out of your diet because they're not giving life to the gut they're taking away from from the stuff we need to to rebuild the gut yeah and then you can also if you get one of anthony's books he's got a 28 day cleanse in there He's got a liver cleanse. That liver cleanse will cleanse out the liver of all of that toxic debris and it will allow you to heal at an even quicker rate. Yep. All right, you guys. I hope that wasn't too much information for you. Make sure you soak it all in. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. And then drop some comments below. Let us know what you're thinking, what you think of all this information. Do you have any questions? Yeah, we're, we're, yeah happy to help you guys. We're here to, to talk to you, so let us know what's going on. All right, you guys, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. All right, see ya. Bye.